After another huge month of boxing, we take a turn from fights that could be to look at a few mishaps from the past that serve as a lesson to both present and future fighters. A swift reminder that, as we know, you don't play boxing. Oh, never shot, never shot. And so, unlike a through the leg dribble in basketball or a step over in football, there are a few pretty obvious reasons that most should avoid showboating inside the squared circle. Whilst Roy Jones' rooster punch, Ali's shuffle, and Hamid's low hands all made for incredible viewing, a short lapse in concentration for a lesser fighter could have devastating consequences. Here we look at five high-profile occasions where the showboating went very wrong. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. We'll start with the most recent, where we head to Leicester, England. A vacant WBO title bout that became a viral sensation for one clear reason. Let's welcome Super Sam Maxwell. Maxwell and Sidiri both entered the ring with almost identical 10-0 records. In the early rounds, the Frenchman seemed to be getting the better of Maxwell, putting him down in the first and second. Oh, he's got him again! Surviving an early scare, the Brit looked to regain some control, though was seemingly on his way to a clear points loss. That was, however, until the tenth and final round. Sidiri landed a clean few shots, which led to careless showboating and dancing around the ring in pantomime fashion. He had low hands, chin exposed, and with just 14 seconds to go, Maxwell landed the shot of his career. A night that echoed a brutal reminder to fight until the final bell, and then it's not over until it's over. We knew the way I was working and off the jab, and I just let it go. I just believed in it. I knew. I think he switched off for a little bit, and I just took my chances. Next, we take a trip back four years ago to a night in Orlando, Florida. An Olympic quarter finalist who lost out to Lomachenko. Now, Fideo's not bad at all. Nice style. Tucks up pretty good. And with the warning signs of having 10 knockouts already on his resume, his opponent appeared to show little concern. Some of you love him, some of you hate him, but you know what he does? Just like Floyd Mayweather, he evokes emotions. Eight months prior, at the end of 2013, we revisit that unforgettable night in Texas. When, when you leave this press conference, no stutter, no stutter. Y'all better know I'm going for the knockout. Adrian Broner, 28-0, looked to be on the path to superstardom. However, against the rugged and heavy-handed Argentinian came the rude awakening that many believe he needed. December 14th, we weren't about Maidana. You know, um, I respect this coach. I respect him as a fighter. But December 14th, I'm going to beat his ass, though. Swarmed from the opening bell, Maidana put pressure on him immediately. Raises him with the right hand. Maidana off to a very quick start. And in a moment of disrespect, Broner taunted his opponent at the end of the first. Oh, wow. Another gesture, which would come back to haunt him later in the fight. Uppercuts, the last one just grazing the chin. Punishing to the body and head, Maidana landed a left hook in the second that floored Broner for the first time in his career. Right hand lead by Maidana, that sticks another right hand. Broner goes down for the first time in his career. And despite seeming to recover mid-fight, Round eight saw another looping left hook send him down. Winning by unanimous decision came a satisfying victory for the Argentinian. And watching Broner leave the ring without congratulation or being interviewed was clearly a huge reality check for the American. I'm okay. You know, it happens to the best of them. And 
And as of, even as of right now, I'm still one of the best. Moving back still, we remind another 18 months to Quebec, Canada. At the Bell Center, in front of 15,000 fans, the unbeaten Boutte came in against Olympic bronze medalist Edison Miranda. Well, you know, I don't think they need to count rounds. They just need to make sure that they win the fight. Looking the sharper and smarter fighter, Boutte looked comfortable during the first couple of rounds moving well and unloading flurries of punches where his Colombian opponent looked to land power shots. Frustrated and having little success, Miranda tried to get into his opponent's head, taunting Butte at the ending bell of the first, then carelessly dropping his hands in the third. And just like the fighters featured previously, we know how this ends. Hands on hips, stood up straight, Miranda suffered a careless lapse of concentration and false confidence. Regaining stance and walking forwards, he found himself immediately on the receiving end of a vicious left uppercut. Miranda did not see that coming, didn't expect it. You know, they love their hockey here in Montreal, and that punch went right through the five hole. Last up, a night 15 years ago in California that saw the collision of two solid lightweights. Two fighters that had been beaten previously, but still had a lot at stake. In what was always destined to be an all-action fight, the pace was high from the get-go. Despite landing some crisp flurries of punches early on, Payton saw himself fading in the middle rounds. Maybe turning. Nate Campbell maybe maybe turning the tide in this fight. As Campbell, the bigger puncher of the two, looked to be capitalizing, piling on the pressure. Punching power, especially in the right hand, is starting to impose itself on this fight. In five, looking to be on his way out, Payton was caught with a sickening body shot doubling over in obvious pain. Knowingly hurt, Campbell grew more and more confident with little return fire coming his way. Just 20 seconds later, the American dropped his hands playing with his opponent. And right on cue, the Australian unloaded the biggest left hook of his career. Another instance where one single punch and split-second reaction can completely flip a fight on its head. Played with his opponent, was completely overconfident with his hands down, got hit right on the chin with a perfect left hook, and was knocked out. Five harsh reminders that boxing is not for the faint-hearted, and that no matter the circumstances, to fight to the final bell. Regularly, we see fighters take matters into their own hands, though with the continued revival of the flashy style displayed by fighters like Lomachenko, Kelly, and Saunders, comes the harsh reality of what could happen in a moment of negligence.